Hi, my name is Frankie from AA Dental Design and, and InLabOnDemand.com. Um, thank you for joining me. You know, uh, I got, I, I was asked to do a webinar or a step-by-step, -step, you know, in my laboratory, you know, we've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, screw retain full, full arches, but um, it's something that in the past year has really, you know, grown. Um, you know, we've been getting a lot of cases, you know, on a monthly basis that are really starting to, 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 to really grow our business, you know. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, we decided in our laboratory was to be a little bit different. So um, instead of offering, let's say, these kind of cases, you know, full zirconia, we started looking for a, a product that was a little bit, you know, maybe different that people didn't know about too much and stuff. So about a year and a half ago, I was introduced to, you know, Trilor, which... Um, uh, a friend of mine, the owner of Harvest Dental, Sasha Dervanesian, kind of brought it over to me and said, hey, you know, check this out. This is pretty cool. Uh, you know, you can put any kind of, you know, materials on, uh, you know, crowns, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, Emaxes, Lisi, you know, Zirconia, whatever it is that you, that you want to put on it, um, you can you can create these these cool looking cases. So, so I decided about a year and a half ago to kind of eliminate Zirconia and which is kind of cool because even with this material with this trailer, I can even put you know zirconia crowns. So my laboratory uses uh, zircon HT and XT. So you know we can we can put it on the posteriors, the HT. We can put you know the anteriors. We can put um, the the I'm sorry the HT on the posteriors, XT on the anteriors. But uh, but like I said, you know it's it's a really cool material and stuff. Um, it really kind of picked up. Uh, so I was asked to do uh, uh, like a little step by step of how we do it at the laboratory. You know, my laboratory we use uh, in lab, so um, we design everything in the in lab. Once we we design it, we mill it uh, in the MCX fives, uh, and then you know we just put everything together and stuff. I mean, I would love to you know spend some time and and show you the complete process because we also do a lot of immediate loads. So there is like a process from the beginning to then go into, let's say, you know, the try-ins because we use uh, the, the Harvest PMMAs, the aesthetic, te the, the aesthetic uh, temp uh, acrylics. And I mean, I would love to go through all that and kind of show you how we do the bites and how we do this and that. But I mean, I, I don't think that you guys want to sit here for, for a couple hours, you know, to, to, to see us do that. You know, I just did a course, so my voice is a little, you know, groggly. But um, but I'm very happy that you guys uh, joined me. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna you know get started and uh, and and just you know go through the whole thing. I'm sure you guys can probably have some questions and stuff. To be honest with me, not with me, with you. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I would rather answer the questions afterwards. Uh, only because, again, once I start talking, if anybody's not ever talked to a, like, you know, a, a computer where nobody's talking back to you, you know, it, it's very interesting. You kind of get into your own head. It's kind of weird. But either way, you know, uh, I'm very excited to just kind of share, you know, what we do and how we do it. So, uh, yeah, let's let's get started. All right. We use uh, InLab 18, so let's open it up. Um, I have a case here that we scan with NT Trading scan bodies. Um, it's an all on six. So we'll open up. Let's choose the uh, screw retained crowns. Number three, five, seven, ten, twelve, and fourteen. We'll click on Ponic. We'll click on four, six, eight, nine, eleven, thirteen. Then we'll click on Gingiva. I'll hold down Control and click on all the screw retained uh, crowns. Abutment level cemented. I'll choose NT Trading. And with NT Trading, 
uh, each one stands for a different brand of, of uh, let's say, um, implants and stuff. So we'll just choose the first one. Uh, this is the, the cap that comes with it. So it's a multi-unit in post. And uh, we get that from Henry Schein. There's only one scan body that you use when it comes to in-lab. You only have to buy one of them. Uh, it scans multiple. And I'll show you uh, in a second here when I get to um, uh, the section where it shows the, the scanning. Um, but it's already pre-scanned and stuff. So uh, for this one, I'm going to use uh, MCX5, high-performance polymer, uh, high polymers. And um, and then uh, we'll we'll go to the scanning section so you so you guys can see um, all the different catalogs that I've already scanned in. <clears throat> Sorry. So once it opens up, on the bottom here you'll see that I have uh, a couple different catalogs. I have the lower jaw, right? I have the um, upper jaw which I don't use the scan bodies on. I just, it's just basically the, the, the model without the scan bodies. And then I have my buckle bite. I also scan in my gingiva. Once I scan in my gingiva, lastly, I, I scan my scan bodies. Like I said, you know, with NT Trading, all you really need to do is buy one. It's called an impost. You can get that from, from uh, Zon. Okay, so once we move forward, We'll start the case here. Okay, I can edit my model. Uh, another thing is that once you have all the catalogs, it shows, I mean, every catalog is, is overlapping each other. Uh, you know, I'm Cuban, so I kind of think sometimes in my head in Spanish. So I might all of a sudden break out in some Spanish with you guys. But you see how it's overlapping on all the different uh, um, catalogs. All right, so I can check the byte. Once I have the bite where 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 it is, um, if if let's say if you get a very first case and that that case has a bite registration, um, you just mount it with the bite. You can scan it in if you wanted to as a biocopy as well. So we'll position our model here. Once we have it in position, the occlusal plane, uh, we'll move forward. This is more or less just telling the software where we want the teeth and where the implants are. Um, so I'll just kind of place all the numbers, you know, where um, they belong. I'll just put them right into place like this. On uh, this section right here, when I, you click on the scan bodies, normally it, it clicks. I mean, normally it finds all the scan bodies for you. So it will it will go, let's say, with number you know, three, and then um, it already found it. If it didn't, it would have like a little question mark uh, under the implant. Um, but I just like clicking on them just in case because I don't want to have to design a case over again in case it, it found the wrong one. So I'll just go through each one of them, double click, and just, you know, double click on each one just to confirm that each number implant goes with the scan body. Um, again, you don't have to, but, you know, for me, I guess I'm a little superstitious. Uh, when it comes to having to redesign stuff, it's it's the Cuban in me, you know. So, so here I'm just going to pick my my margin. Once I, um, uh, this is for the gingiva. So when I click on the margin, I can make this you know wherever I want it to be. Normally I I kind of just you know drop down a line so that um, it pops up because I'm not really sure where the teeth are going to be, especially if I don't if I'm not going to copy uh, a denture. Or, or let's say if I scanned in the um, the bite or the bite block. So again, I'm just dropping down the line of where I, I think I want my gingiva. I can always edit that a little bit later, uh, but for now, I'm just you know going through the the process of, of designing uh, these cases. So um, now we'll go to the edit um, insertion axis. Uh, there's two words that I have problems saying, insertion, and uh, the other one is zircon. Everybody keeps telling me it's sir, zircon. So, <laughs> but here I just want to make sure that I don't see any any red 
uh, anything like that when it comes to the angles and stuff. Um, because also that means that the mill won't be able to reach those areas. Here I'll have the parameters. So if I want to just thicken things up, I can. Um, so again, when it comes to the you know the cleaning spacer, I can uh, lift that off the the tissue. Uh, or if I want, I can you know just have the margin stay where it is, where it's sitting right on the tissue. But I can add spacer underneath but it will be sealed on that little tissue area right there if I if I just click on that and then here I can just kind of thicken up my uh, my margin around where I want that to, to, to sit so I'll just you know I can um, move forward when it comes to the uh, crowns I also have the set parameters for that so on the uh, gingiva spacing on the bottom here um, I'm not really going to use that too much because I'm using gingiva on this particular case. So the same one. All, all, all of them are going to be exactly um, the same when it comes to the parameters. And this will just set your parameters that are going to be around those multi-units. So you can you can move those around as well when it comes to your minimal thicknesses and, and the spacer that you're going to be using. So uh, one of the thing that one of the things that we can do is also you know, choose the morphology of each case that we want, right? So uh, we can use biogeneric uh, crowns if we want to. Um, we can also choose from the tooth library. Uh, we have Vita, Candelors, MERS. Um, each one has their their own, you know, libraries that we can add if we wanted to. I mean, um normally to be honest with you it's not like i really use them too much except if the doctor does want me to use uh, denture teeth uh for the most part i'll just use you know uh biogeneric is 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 my number one especially in the posteriors and stuff that's what i'll use for the anteriors when you click on you know the anteriors now you can also choose the different libraries for anteriors as well, right? Um, you just highlight them. You have a void, square, or tapered. Those are really the only ones that I use, but I mean, uh, they have they have a bunch of different ones. Uh, if you want to change it up a little bit, you know, like like this one. So it, it's whatever whatever your choices are and stuff. Uh, whatever you do decide that you like. You know, again, you know, as, as a dental tech, you start messing around either way with whatever that is. Once you mill it out, you change it up because, you know, it is what it is. But let's say that you wanted to change the tooth too. Let's say if you have an area where you can only have one bicuspid, uh, you can you can choose whatever you want um, and, and say, well, I want one bicuspid. I want three molars. I want three bicuspids. You know, I want to change a, a, a number 10 and add two number 10. So... You know, like I said, you just click on that and you're ready to go. Now we'll we'll click on positioning, which allows us now to position uh, our arch into whatever position we want. But we can also include the patient's, you know, picture, use the smile design and stuff. But, you know, again, that's for <laughs> another uh, step by step. Um, so once I, uh, I can, I can bring out my, lower arch once i bring out my lower arch i'll click on control again control a allows them to all be grouped so when i click on linear i can move my arch as one piece if i want to move them individually i also can but uh, for now i'm just going to kind of set it into its position whatever position i want it to be right um you know again i'm not going to take too much time to really get it perfect but just kind of go through the motions and and get it to you know close enough so you can kind of see uh, the uh, the positioning tool. So I'll just kind of bring it into occlusion. Once I bring it into you know occlusion, I can again move them individually um, or you know move them in groups as well. By holding down Control, I can I can move you know uh, maybe six at a time. The anteriors bring them down. You know, eight and nine, I can do, you know, whatever I want. So now I'll click Escape. 
And once I click Escape, it, it will ungroup them. So now I can move them individually into its position. It's like if we're setting up a denture. I mean, we can do dentures on in Lab 18. Um, you know, split the file. You know, create the teeth all one piece if if we wanted to. Uh, again, <laughs> for another step by step. Uh, so, all right. I just want to make a couple more movements, and then you know we'll we'll get it to propose. Sometimes it uh, <laughs> takes a little bit long to propose, depending on the case. I mean, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm actually using my my Apple to do this. I have it. Uh, I have a boot camp, so I can design and uh, design in in lab. So that's why sometimes it sounds like it's an airplane because it looks, sounds like it's gonna. My computer goes kind of interesting. So let's propose it. Um, now we'll start proposing. Let's see, I can hear the the computer warming up right now. You can hear it in the background. <laughs> All right. So now the teeth, um, it's positioning them where I left them. And then there's a couple more. Okay, now it's going to do the gingiva. So um, when it proposes the gingiva, like I said, depending on where you put that line, uh, it's going to propose the gingiva, you know, according sometimes. If you didn't bring the gingiva out enough, uh, it will do something you know interesting like that, or like you can see on the lingual there, it's kind of thin, so I can change that on my parameter, or I can go back to uh, the model section on the top there, go back to my margin, and once I go back to my margin, I can just edit my margin um, and change it up, you know, make it a little smaller, bigger. Uh, it all depends on on uh, what you want to do. So once you do that, then you go back to the the section, and then edit the element again, and then it will uh, put the teeth exactly where you left them. But um, it will it will change the gingiva depending on on what you did with that line. And so it will just repropose that again. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it does sound like. Like my apple's gonna explode. <laughs> but I love my apple. It's a great computer. All right. So now we'll just uh, repropose the the gingiva to where um, I change those margins to. Okay. Sometimes you'll get like you know again those those areas you can you can s smooth it out if you wanted to. Um, as you can see, the teeth are also poking through, um, but that's because you haven't finalized it yet. Um, right now, it's two separate, you know, um, sections, right? It's the gingiva and then the teeth. So you're working on the gingiva. Let's say if I wanted to just kind of smooth this area out, or I can I can work on the teeth. But once I have it exactly where I want it to be, um, I just move forward and, and finalize it. But for right now, this is just, you know, the editing part of your your case so so if I wanted to I mean again I can spend some more time but I'll just finalize it once it finalizes uh, the case um, then it puts it all as one piece again if I wanted to I can remove all that area from the lingual um, but let's move forward all right so let's go to where it's uh, the export. Um, we have a couple different options when it comes to exporting. Uh, we can export it to, to our CAM, uh, our own software in lab CAM, or you can export, you can see the bottom part right there, that's where the cap's going to go. Uh, you can also export it for to a folder or just export it as an STL. Um, so you can do whatever you want, especially if you don't have, let's say, an MCXL or an MCX5 from InLab and you're milling with a, another uh, system. Okay, so let's um, let's go back to administration. I want to show something real quick. 
Um, that let's say if I wanted to just mill that out um, as a zirconia, but if I go and I click on multi-layer, you can see that I can now split the file. So that means my veneering structure can be, um, let's say, you know, PMMA, you know, zirconia, let's say, and then on the framework, um, I can use the the, the trilor, right? Um, so now when I move forward. It allows us to to split the file, which then uh, I can just mill uh, two two different materials. Okay, so I'll come over here. You know, see on the bottom right there, it, it, it added something where it says edit multi layer. So on the other one, it will it went straight from edit element all the way to finalize. Well, now what it's going to do is going to split the two. So you're going to have the like I said, the bottom layer, which could be trilor, um, and then your crowns on top. I have it set up as a bridge right now, so it could be a zirconia bridge on trilor if you wanted to go that route. So once it's done. Okay. One thing, if it's a bridge, you have to make sure that you have your connectors, so all the teeth have to be, um, you know, touching each other and stuff. You know, I mean, <laughs> touching each other. The contacts need to be uh, connected, right? So you can you can move them around if you wanted to um, to to connect all all the the contacts there. You can use the shape tool, you know, whatever you want. Um, but you'll have to do it. <laughs> you guys didn't really even notice, but I totally messed up there. So um, you can go back to the edit, <laughs> you know, elements, which now allows us to move the the bicuspid. Like I said, if you've never done a webinar or you've never done this, it's it's very interesting because, like I said, you're just sitting here talking to yourself. It's kind of cool. Um, but if I go back to administration, I can uh, change this and say I want them all to be single units. So I hold down control, I click on all the different connectors, right, for the case. And then I'll click on unsplit and then apply. So now when I move forward, they can now be single units, right? So what's cool is, is that you can do single units. Let's say if you wanted to do anteriors and you wanted the anteriors to be single units, but you wanted all your posteriors to be bridges, um, you can use that kind of combination as well. So it's, a, it's up to you however you want to do it. So now they're all single units. Um, so again, I'll have my trilor and then I'll have my crowns and I can, you know, mill them out whatever material I want. Um, again, it's, you know, it, it's up to you. It's what you like. You know, it's whatever um, kind of restorations you, you like using. And so, right, so now you have your trilor. It has the screw holes and everything, okay, and then you also have your, your crowns. Um, so, once you mill everything out, you're good to go. So, you know, one of the things that I didn't show you earlier was um, what it looked like as a bridge. So now you go back to administration and you have to reverse what you did. So um, what you're going to do is you'll scroll down to the bottom here and then you'll click on control, right? And click on every single uh, one of the connectors. You're holding down control, right? And then you'll click on split and then uh, go to the bottom and click apply. So once you go back to the design section, all right, you'll move forward and under edit uh, multi layer, okay, you know, again, once it splits and stuff, and um, 
you'll you'll notice now that it becomes a, a, a whole bridge. It, it, that error right there just kind of showed me that there's, you know, there's not some of the teeth are not connected, but it it doesn't matter. Like right there, see, it's not touching. But if we were to close it up, then it wouldn't give us, you know, that that error. Okay, so then it would look like that, as as one single bridge, and then of course you have the um, the gingiva, uh, which is your your trilor. So now you can mill out both. All right. So let's talk about trilor. Um, it's a harvest dental product um, that I I get uh, for most of my all on fours. Um, I usually get the twenty millimeters. That usually uh, gets me by for most of my cases and stuff, but they do come in in, in bigger sizes and uh, and also smaller sizes. I use the ninety eight point fives, uh, the MCX five. That's what that's what uh, that fits in there. It's a uh, metal free fiberglass reinforced technopolymer for the uh, material uh, dimension guidelines. I'll. I'll you know, leave it up for a little bit so you guys can see it. Um, you know, the indications, the thicknesses for single units, uh, bridges, bars, anterior teeth, um, four unit bridges with two ponics, you know. Um, so everything's there. I, like I said, you can take a picture of it, you know, with your phone. That's what I normally do. I'm not going to lie. Or I'll just go to the website and, uh, and check it out. And then here we have the uh, material comparison table. I mean, this is pretty interesting, you know, when it comes down to a lot of the uh, the strength and stuff, especially on the flexural strength. You know, you're looking at about five, you know, uh, 540. All I can say is uh, it's pretty surprising how strong the material is, especially when you're working with it. You can feel the the, the strength behind it um, when you're hitting it with, the, with your burrs and stuff like that. So... Again, if you want, you know, you can take a picture of this or uh, you can probably find this online as well. So, you know, with me, uh, at least, you know, I milled the Trilor out with uh, my MCX-5s. Um, we use composite burrs to mill out the polymers, which are the blue ones. Um, so uh, usually it all depends on, on, on the case and how much detail you want. It will also depend on how long it actually takes to mill. And we'll mill it wet. Uh, the MCX-5 is a wet, dry mill. So most of the trilors we mill wet. Um, our crowns are milled with the ZCAD wax uh, press uh, pucks, you know, from Harvest Dental. We, we really like the fact that it comes with a uh, the wax press uh, uh, additional wax. Um, that way, if we wanted to add to it or do anything um, after they're milled, uh, before we press them and stuff like that, um, they're they're really good. We get really good results. All every single case that we mill, that let's say even if it's a PFM, whatever it is, gold, gold crowns, um, this is what we use. Also, every time you open up the box, and uh, you see that it says, you know, smile, you're about to be refreshed. To be honest, it's really cool. You know, you walk into your cam or your cam your mill room and uh, it's it's it smells like vanilla so you're definitely being refreshed by by this product um put a smile on my face you know we get really good results with everything that we we mill from this wax even our aesthetic wax ups so once everything is milled um we get everything ready to invest to press uh, in whatever material we choose so now what we're going to do is um we're going to talk about the uh, the framework design. You know, most of the time when we design it, um, it it mills right, but you know we have to touch it up a little bit sometimes. You know, depending on what you're looking for and stuff. So this is the technique that we use. Um, I actually learned this from a good friend of mine, Jack Muslumian. Um, he he actually me, him and I do a course at the laboratory, so we 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 prepare even our PMMAs this way. So we'll make like these contours. To, to mimic like more or less like the roots of the crowns. Um, and so uh, this this is how we do it right here. We'll we'll take the uh, the trilor. Sometimes you get the contours you want um, by designing 
will take a longer time to mill than if you were just to, you know, take your hand piece and, and just kind of carve it out the way you want it to be. Uh, so we'll, you know, depending on how long we want the mill to go, you know, will depend on how much detail we actually give it. So once it mills out, uh, we just start contouring it and, and giving it the grooves that we want, you know. So we'll just kind of shape those areas um, with our burrs, kind of preparing it for the pink, also for the cementation of the crowns. And, um, you know, because I've even timed it sometimes where the mill <laughs> will take, you know, three hours just to mill out one of these bad boys. But if I, if I, if I change the um, milling strategy or, you know, the, yeah, the, the milling strategy, it will actually take a little bit less time. So, and, and I can do this, you know, it won't take me that long to do this. So, and I have control and that's what I like. After we finish contouring, <clears throat> then what we'll do is uh, we'll sandblast the framework using 50 microns of aluminum oxide under, you know, two to three bar pressure. And then we'll uh, we'll steam clean the framework, you know, um, air dry it and using a blow dryer for 15 to 30 seconds to remove all the excess moisture. Okay. Then finally, I just let it sit in a in a clean surface, um, and you know, just let it dry. Once you have your crowns, I mean, you're you know, that it's up to you what kind of crowns you're going to put on here. Um, you know, once you have your crown. You process them how you would normally process your the restorations you use. Um, at the end, once you prepare them, uh, the conventional methods, then you're ready to cement them. Now we'll add some dipping wax uh, to the areas that are glazed that we're not going to add primers to. Um, so we'll just add a little layer there and then scrape away the areas that we're going to be adding um, primers to. Before we do that, we, we sandblast uh, uh, the, the crowns. For the glass ceramic crowns, we'll etch those before after you sandblast it. For our composite work, we use GC um, composites, but to understand the primers, um, we have to understand the different uh, primers that we use for different things, right? So you have your, your metal um, uh, frameworks. Um, you also have your ceramic frameworks. So it all depends on what kind of materials, and then you have your polymers. Um, so when it comes to each one, um, you you will then decide which primer goes where. So you have your metal primer so to put it on your metals, and then your ceramic primers to put it onto your ceramics, and of course your polymers has the composite uh, primers. So uh, with GC it has a new one, uh, which is a a, a multi primer. You can also get the uh, the indication guide um, online through their GC website. And then um, also for the bonding, bonding guidelines and light curing times and also for um, the step lights. What I do like about um, the GC system is it's complete. It has everything that we need. Um, so I just like to stick to one. Now going back to our case, uh, for the trilure, we'll, we'll use the composite uh, primer on it. And then for the uh, uh, crowns, we're going to use a ceramic primer on it. So um, as you can see, the, the, the trilure has been you know already prepped. And the crowns, I got a nice little seal uh, on the margins. You know, to be honest with you, does it have to be sealed? Uh, no, because you're going to be putting composite on there. But... You know, that's just the way that, um, you know, I, we like to do it. Uh, we like to just make sure it's sealed. So so we'll add the uh, ceramic primer to the crown. Then we'll add the uh, the composite primer to the trilor. Uh, just make sure that you, you know, add it to the areas that, that you're going to be um, cementing to. Air dry it or just let it sit for 30 seconds. Then you'll cement the crowns. Make sure that you uh, that you choose the right cement color. 
um, because I've had cases where, of course, I, I used the wrong one, and the next thing I know, you know, all my shades are off. So um, they come in uh, four different shades, you know, A2. Uh, they have a dark. Uh, they also have a a clear and then an opaque one. So just make sure of that because you don't want to make the same mistake. Mine kind of looked like a rainbow. So, <laughs> all right. And then finally, clean off the the axis um, cement that you know uh, basically came through once you placed down the crowns and stuff. Um, just make sure it's nice and clean and stuff. You don't want it to be. Um, you know, all over the trilor and stuff. But either way, you're going to be sand sandblasting that trilor after the cementation either way. But um, just make sure that you you, you, you clean it up. Uh, the easier, the faster you clean it up, you know, before it gets hard and stuff like that, um, it will be good. So with our next step is now the composite work. With the Gradia um, system, it comes with everything that you need. Um, but since we're only going to be putting pink on the trilor, this is the only section that we really need to look at. Uh, it comes with the opaques, the modifiers, the gum opaque, the translucent um, uh, composites. So um, once we have our framework and we sandblasted the the, the trilore, um, what we're going to do now is add our composite. So we put the primer over the section that now we're going to be adding the, the composite work to. Very important. If you're going to add composite to the actual ceramic crowns, you have to add the ceramic primer around the areas that the composite's going to, going to go to. Um, and you would also have to add the composite primer to the trilor. So you have to make sure that you, you don't um, get the composite primer uh, on top of the crowns. Um, you just want to make sure that you add a little bit of ceramic primer around those areas. We'll add our first layer of the gum modifier, um, let's say the GM3. Um, we'll just kind of just squirt it. I mean, the way that we do it is we'll just kind of squirt it over um, and then just create our first layer. Then with your favorite instrument, you'll just spread it throughout. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get it inside those uh, embrasures that we opened up uh, when we were working on the uh, Trilor. Uh, we have the GC uh, a Lab Light Duo. Uh, it's a two in one, so we'll pre cure for about you know thirty seconds, and then you know final cure for three to five minutes. Um, so once we have our base down, we'll then uh, add our our next um, layer to it. So we'll take let's say the the gum G twenty three. And now create uh, the next layer. Then again, take your favorite instrument and just start, you know, molding. You know, again, you can put a picture in, in front of you uh, of, of I don't know, of a case that you really like, uh, of some of the studs out there that really uh, get crazy on their composite work. You know, the Javier Vasquez of the world, uh, you know, they, they take their time. You know, again, this is just a simple technique that, that uh, we teach, even in our courses, uh, we, we like it. You know, we have a lot of people that come and, uh, and have never even touched composite work. So we call it just like a two-layer technique, and then we, you know, we pretty it up a little bit. Once we pretty it up, um, then we'll take our, our uh, OptiGlaze stains and stuff and, you know, just finish them off. What's cool about composite work is, you can, you can go as as much detail as you want. Um, you can you can keep it simple, like I just showed you, or you can um, really take it to another level. Um, but at the end, you know, it's it's pretty cool stuff with these with these materials. Then finally, you're going to take the air barrier, uh, just uh, put it around the composite work. Once you put it all the way around the composite work, uh, you can uh, you'll you'll final cure it. Uh, for three to five minutes um, and after that you can take and contour it with with you know with your burrs uh, do whatever you want to do uh, it's up to you so after you um, work on it with your handpiece or you know like I said it's 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 100% up to you 
um, then we're gonna we're gonna stain and glaze it. Um, Optic glaze is what I use. Uh, it is to me, it's really really good. Uh, it, it 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 comes with so many different shades that you can I mean you can do you know magic with it. Um, I I really like it. Now apply the Opti glaze. Um, you can you know add a thin layer. It doesn't have to be that thick. Uh, once you apply the the Opti glaze, then you can choose whatever stains you want to apply uh, after this. So you can uh, just like I said, pretty it up. You got your blues, your grays. You have a bunch of different um, uh, shades that you can use. You know, like I said before, I like simplicity. I like things to be, you know, I can't really sit here. I mean, I, right now I've been sitting here for a good 40 some minutes and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like, you know, having to get up. So I like simplicity. I like things to just kind of go, but I do like to make sure that, you know, rules are followed, right? So you have to make sure that um, whenever you're doing stuff like this, you know, you sandblast it, you clean it, um, you, you just got to follow the rules of every material. Failure usually comes because we don't follow the rules. We kind of mix and match. That's why I like if I have GC, I use everything from GC. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, why do I like InLab? Well, I like InLab just because it's a complete system. But when it comes down to, you know, the, the Galileos, you know, in lab, CEREC, everything kind of just flows. At the laboratory, we we tell our doctors, come and experience the workflow. So now what we do is we're going to load this, um, our final, and so we'll put in the multi-unit abutments. Um, we'll take a rubber dam, wrap it around. We, we like it to be tight, not too tight, but, you know, just tight enough. Um, after we, we, we put the rubber dam, we make little holes, kind of expose where the screws are going to go in. Um, we, we don't, again, if it rips and stuff like that, because we don't want the cement or, or anything to kind of creep into those little areas and stuff, because then it's going to call for a long day. Um, once we expose that, then we put the multi-units or, or the caps on top, uh, screw them in. Uh, once they're screwed in, uh, we will then... Uh, add some wax uh, around the screw holes so that when we uh, load it, the cement doesn't get uh, inside the uh, screw area. Um, and then, um, you know, we just plop it right on top and, uh, you know, let it let it cure itself. And, uh, and that's about it. You know, now we send it off to the doctor. Uh, Case gets put in, and it's always a good day. I just want to say, you know, thank you for even taking the time. I'm I'm humbled. Uh, I I uh, thank you very much. Um, so hopefully, um, this helped. Thank you.